Gears are everywhere. In cars, elevators, even bikes. None of these objects would work as well as they do without the use of gears. But how can we understand what gears do? We're going to take a close look at gears and try and understand a little more of the physics and engineering that makes them work. Then we'll use what we've learned to try and understand how to win a bike race. When you're getting ready for a bike race, the most important thing to know about is torque. A torque is made up of a force and a distance. A force is a push or a pull, and that force is applied at a certain distance away from something that we'll call the pivot point. Watch as I try to push this revolving door. It's hard here, but much easier here. Why is that? Well, when you're trying to push the door close to the pivot point, you need a big force. As you move away from the pivot point, you increase the distance component of the torque, and then you have to apply less force. But what's the trade-off? Let's take a look at a top view. This revolving door needs a certain torque to spin around. You can get that torque by applying a big force at a small distance away from the pivot point, or a small force at a big distance. However, if you apply a large force, you only need to travel around a small circle to rotate once. The smaller force is easier, but you need to travel in a bigger circle. Gears work in a similar way. Gears touch each other and therefore apply a force to each other. And the size of the gear is what determines the distance part of the torque. One torque can drive the first gear, and you can get a different torque out of the second gear. In this case, a bigger one. The trade-off? The bigger gear provides a bigger torque, but has to travel a longer distance before it spins around once. Sound familiar? Bikes use something called a sprocket, which is essentially a special gear for use with a chain. For now, let's just say we can only change the size of the back sprocket, the one that drives the back wheel. But how will changing the sprocket size or shifting gears help you to be a better biker? So to test this out, we're going to have a race. In this race, the first cyclist, me, is going to be stuck using a big sprocket. The second cyclist is going to be stuck using a smaller one. And they're off. It looks like Cyclist 2 is off to an early lead, with Cyclist 1 pedaling furiously to keep up. Oh, and it looks like Cyclist 2 can't get enough torque to get up that hill. Cyclist 1 breezes past her. Can Cyclist 2 catch up on the downhill? And she does it. It's going to be a close finish. And Cyclist 2 wins! As you can see, using the larger sprocket, let me put a huge torque on the wheel, making the hill a piece of cake. But to get anywhere, I had to pedal my legs off. Just like moving the revolving door far from the pivot point, it's easier, but there is more distance involved. The smaller sprocket lets Cyclist 2 turn the wheel around many times, but without the extra torque, she had trouble getting up that hill. Just like moving the door close to the pivot point, it's harder, but less distance is involved. I hope you learned a little something about gears and the trade-offs involved. There is still plenty more to learn. See you next time.